Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but I'm so glad to be able to do a live stream today because that's been a challenge this week. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. This whole miracle of us managed to getting online and out on a stream is entirely up to him. So I, I have to give him like a big clap because there were so many challenges. In fact, John, I'm going to give you some bubbles. Ooh. You deserve, these bubbles are for you. These Texas snowflakes, these are your Texas snowflakes. So uh, what I do is I teach beginners how to paint in acrylic. Today we're going to be doing this really cute frog on a flower from this reference photo. I'm going to show you how I take this image from this reference photo and turn it into a painting. I'm going to demonstrate uh, a really cool way to draw when you're not really great at drawing yet. But if this way seems a little too complicated, remember that if you go to the website, to this video page, you will find a free traceable that you can just download and print out and know it is not cheating to trace. It's just a method of getting the image on canvas because when we're painting these lines that we put on, you still have to paint the image anyway. So how you get the image on there isn't as important as maybe some of the other skills that you might be demonstrating. So it's something you might not know if you were new. I hope everybody's excited about the oh, frog. Super excited for this. I'm, I'm feeling hoppy. I'm feeling, I'm feeling froggy. Yeah. We got a lot of frog fans in the community, I feel. I feel like frogs couple. are fun and popular. Yeah, we got a couple frog fans over here. <sighs> you frog fans, I give you kisses. So you guys ready to have a little bit of fun, hang out, chat, and paint. And listen, even if you're not painting, come in, chat, hang with your friends, talk about art. It's an all good thing. Let's turn around and get on into this lesson, John. Okay. okay. So I have my reference here, my photo reference, and I have here a gridded reference. You guys actually have your own copy of this. So if you need to print it out and use that, it is also on the website and it's also free to get and download. Even if sometimes it's like tricky to download things, which I completely get. I have a nine by 12 artboard. This is an artist loft artboard. And we like to put wishes on our boards to kind of put some positivity into the universe and optimism. So I have a wish for Terry to find a family member that she hasn't seen in a long time. We are looking for Adam Kyle Rogers. If you know Adam Kyle Rogers, who used to know Terry, um, she's looking for it. So hook them up on Facebook. I don't know. I She mentioned this and I was like, I don't know. You never know if we're six degrees of separation away from Kevin Bacon. Maybe we're six hey. degrees of separation away from Adam Kyle Rogers. <laughs> but Kevin, if you hear this, I would love to paint with you. Just saying. All right. You don't have to do that, Kevin. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, I am wishing for uh, a personal family member to have a really successful and safe eye surgery. Desiree uh, asked for wishes for uh, her little brush who is going through a lot medically right now to have like a really good treatment, to have very low pain and to have a most incredible positive outcome and to be supported and not scared. Her little brush is going through a lot. Um, I am wishing for Heidi to have a safe and successful pregnancy and then uh, I am wishing uh, Lou uh, love for it, all of our furry companions and friends, for all the little animals out there, all the people who help us be better people every day, all those little beings. Mm. Um, safe travels for Terry and Donna. And then I, this was a really sweet one, and I have to concur, wish for healing and peace for communities everywhere. I think, uh, I think we could all just use that, and I'm wishing that for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, around the world, uh, globally. So I understand sometimes it's hard to keep the whole planet in line, is it not? It, you know, that's you a could, big job. You can tell the planet, you know, guys, be nice. And they don't listen. I think the moon should be in charge of Earth. I do. I think someone should be able to take this issue to the moon. Well, see, the moon <laughs> has perspective on the Earth and could give us a little, you know. Clearly, we don't. Do you ever like listen to astronauts talk about looking at the planet and then at the end of it, you feel kind of bad for ever being petty? Yeah. Like they're like, oh, I saw this thing in this expanse and I understood the nature of man and this thin line of air that separates us from space and how we're all interconnected, our air, our water. And, and you're listening to this amazing astronaut. And then at the end of it, you're like, man, I should get over like this little block party issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how life is. I'm going to dip my brush in water. I am going to load it. This is a number 30 Art Sherpa brush. This is from a line of brushes. They're my line of brushes. Here's the trick, though, guys. Guess what? 
What's that? You could just use any old big brush that you have. Could you? Because we're going to paint this whole canvas black. Hmm. All right. Black. Black, black, black. So what is everybody hoping to learn from today's painting? Well, this is a good question that we get a lot, which <laughs> amuses me. Do, are you amused, sir? I'm amused. I'm so, also amused. I'm chillin amused. Uh, 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 sorry. Chillin' Penguin would like to know. <laughs> chillin' Penguin. Do you paint your paintings before you do the live stream to practice it and know what you're doing? Uh, sometimes, Chillin' Penguin, less than you probably would be comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's kind of fun because sometimes during live, I get in over my head. Every once in a while, not today probably, but you, oh, now I've done it, haven't I? Let's yes. knock on some wood here. So, chilling penguin, this. what are you doing? No, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to end up with hypnotoad today. Instead are we of... going to have a hypnotoad today? Yeah, we could. So, uh, I don't always practice ahead of time because I basically know what my process is for creating a work of art. And um, as long as I kind of lean into that process, generally the outcome is pretty good. Um, sometimes I will do a painting beforehand just cause I want to work out a design idea and everything before I work it out with you mm -hmm. and you'll, and you'll see when those are, but today is just our reference photo. So your reference photo and my reference photo, we're in the same boat. Now this is streaky and, and it doesn't necessarily look so on camera, but it is. Yeah, it is. I can and, zoom in. On okay, it. cool. And so look, if you want it to look really, really good. You're going to want to paint enough coats of black to have a nice, even matte black background for this particular image to pop. All right. So, so you might have take, to do a couple coats. May take a coat or two. Coat or two. <laughs> there we go. Mute her. So she can't make all that noise. So as, as you uh, watch this stuff dry, um, one of the reasons we talk about not using heat is that as this dries, you'll notice that there'll be a a change in the sheen and in um, how light and dark it is. It'll start to lighten a little bit. So if you use a uh, student paint, that happens a lot. You can really see it ash out and gray out. But with uh, a pro paint or a good quality student paint, it maintains those that dark black. So you can see it's very much black like the background there. So, but that's just something to be aware if you use heat you can uh, cause that to accelerate and be worse. And not just in black colors, but most of the dark colors do that a bit. So be aware of that and try to use no heat, so to speak. And I think she'll probably be done here in just a second, so I won't go too deep into other than check in the link in the description down below for more information on what we do, which is teaching people how to paint. Ta-da! And to do that, there's a whole bunch of cool resources like our website we keep all sorts of cool stuff so check that out there i need more black paint so i have a question for everybody who's here at the live you guys get to decide this next part mm. now if you painted with me for a while or you've done any of acrylic april either year <laughs> you've seen my grid method and you've also seen my tracing method i have been getting a lot of requests to freehand lately mm. and so i want to give it up to you guys but i'm going to give you an understanding of what freehanding means versus gridding so if you'd like to see how I might loosely sketch and freehand in my reference versus gridding it in, I'm totally up for that because I know I've been getting that question a bunch, bunch. Um, just know that when you grid, you are much closer to your reference. The process of gridding out of drawing keeps you very, very close to your reference. When you freehand, you tend to slip into more of your artist brain. And so it's not necessarily always as close, but there's some really cool processes. I'm going to have to paint another couple of coats. So while I'm doing that and the lag catch up, I John's going to talk to you guys. I got uh, questions for you. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. All right. So while you guys are thinking so, so, about that, do you want to free, do you want me to freehand it? And I'll show you how I would freehand this weird little thing. Or do you want it gritted? Cause you want to see it coming out exactly like the reference photo. Okay. So while you're painting on the next background, uh -huh. so, uh, so I've got a whole bunch of questions for you. So, so is it typical to have to do multiple coats of black? Yes. Okay. Um, Even with good paint. Right now I'm painting with really, really good paint and it's highly pigmented. But so black and white, when there's a mistake or a boo-boo in any of those fields of color, it really shows. Yeah. So small mistakes have big impact. Does a black canvas need to be painted uh, again black or can you just go over it? 
Like it's, um, it's a lot of black. times what you get from the store that's pre-black, they do a pretty beautiful job. Yeah. Of uh, applying several coats of black gesso for you. In fact, I'll tell you a little tip of my experience, a little pro tip, um, is that I find the black gessoed canvases, the ones that are pre-done, are much nicer than the white gessoed canvases. Hmm. They use a better product and they have a nicer finish. And often they are on a bigger sale. So that can be a great way to save a little money and, you know, get ahead on that situation. So there's a there's a general consensus here that I would say everyone would really love to have the traceable, but they would also like you to show them how to do it free-handed. And mm. that's pretty much a universal, like, we want the traceable. But well, you guys have the traceable through. and you have the grid. And I think both and the web page has explanations on how to do both methods. So if you've never done either before, right, if you've never done either before, you can go and reference those. Yeah. And if you want me to show you how I would do this, I'll have to bring it over, but I'll show you. Because yeah. it's very different when we do this with our artist brain. It's kind of like this weird little, I make a circle, I make a line, I move a line, I make a circle. Yeah, so if you guys want to see that, they I'm happy to do that. They, so I'm not sure what that means. Oh. Okay. So we'll do that. Uh, and I'm going to scroll back up here. Thank you, Patty. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you, Tabitha B, for the sticker. I'll have to remind Cinnamon when she comes back in here. You guys snuck in there. And for all those lovely emojis, thank you guys. We love seeing you out here. It's really nice. Um, you know, boy, getting, uh, getting, getting our house to, you know, like, ready for this next series of videos you guys have coming. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I don't know how much Cinnamon has... Uh, put in the groups but if you guys are not a member of our Facebook group you definitely should be um, there's links out there in the description down below our website there should be links out there we have all sorts of really cool stuff coming coming out and I know cinnamon posts up about that what 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 up oh, about our new upcoming series and videos oh well tomorrow is watercolor Wednesday on Facebook if anybody's looking to learn how to watercolor we're gonna do an octopus <sighs> I think in a little circle and Tabitha B and Patty sent lots of love over here from the patron side of things. I'm Tabitha B. You guys get bu bubbles. All right. While I, while I get my brain together about how I'm going to, we go forward, these bubbles are for you. These bubbles? We have painted two coats of black paint. Don't we? Uh, I think we feel accomplished. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, many of you guys that are painting along may feel some anxiety or nervousness when you're painting, and that might surprise you because you probably took it up to feel more relaxed. And what I want you to do right now if you're feeling that is just take a deep breath in <sighs> and let it out. Try to relax your shoulders and your neck, and remember it's just art. So it doesn't really, it's like, okay, whatever happens is okay because it's just art. Right? It's just very subjective. We just do what we feel like. We, we do what we want to do. We Adam's family it. Yeah. Right? So, so just don't stress yourself out. This is, a, this is an underlying anxiety that I'm kind of seeing through here because there's a couple comments kind of based around this. Okay. So they really like the idea of do, if you're doing it freehand. Oh, that's my own bottom. Okay. Well, they're going to have to just not. How do I say, like, uh, I, no. sorry, I can't talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't important. That was a live thing. So, you know. Okay. If so, you're ever wondering if our show is live. Yes, my dove. So this was the, this was the general anxiety here. I've got to remember that which, which screen I'm on. So they love the idea that you're going to freehand this mm -hmm. in. But they're concerned that it might take longer than the tracing or gritting method because they don't want you to lose time to the painting part. Gritting is longer. Gritting is longer. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. So we'll still have plenty of time for painting. Gritting today. is more accurate and more uh, like consistent to the image itself. Okay. Right? Um, trace Traceable is pretty consistent to the image itself. Freehand, your little art brain gets to make some votes into the situation. So one of the things I'm going to tell my little art brain over here is like, look, brain, the flower has got to be at least this big. And some of it's got to come up to at least this part of the canvas. We have a nice little stem here. And if you look at it, and you, you can even kind of see it in the, in the uh, grid one, it's just a little over left from the center. So I'm going to bring a little stem up. 
it's always good to every once in a while check your uh, art brain. <laughs> like, how's my art brain doing? At the base of the stem, it's got a nice cylindrical shape, so it's always good to kind of make little circles and be like, what does that look like? Oh, that's nice. Let's bring that up here. And we can kind of see the gesture of this, right? Because we have some gesture of this piece. Oh. There's this nice little flow here, and there's this nice little flow here. Can you guys see the flow here? Yeah, can I ask And something? the flow here? Yeah? You take your, show me what you're drawing with. Oh, this is a Dritz chalk tool. This is in the description below. Uh, people have different experiences with it. I've had only positive ones. Um, it's used in uh, really sewing, actually. I like the white chalk. It's not very staining, and I can easily, like, erase and remove it if I change my mind about a thing. It's a mechanical chalk pencil. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, this part of my flower through here, right, kind of comes in like this. We're going to bring it into the flower. We know we've got a little bit of petal that will come here. Notice how this is much more uh, gestural and less detail-oriented, right? So some petals will come here. This frog is not made for management. It is not detail oriented. <laughs> oh, he's not one of the frogs from Kipo and the Wonder Beast. No. No. He, this is he the is frog. He's not wearing a suit. He's, he's where hanging meet out. the Robinsons. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to hang out with a caterpillar on the mushroom. Always a good one. Now, our frog himself, right? He's going to take up a bit of space. And if you look at his little head, his little froggy head, I see a very squished little little cylindrical element there. That's kind of interesting. And you can bring in, he's got a great shape. Frogs have this wonderful little frog body. I love their little frog body. Makes me super happy. And then, you know, their eyes generally come in. And then you've got a nice little eye and perspective. And then I think it's very important that we capture his little... <laughs> This little weird face. I find that um, when I freehand, I might grab a different chalk here because my, my paint's still soft. If your acrylic paint is not hard, dry, and cool, sometimes the chalk tool will make an indent, but it won't make a chalk line. Mm. So if you have one of these tools and you're like, mm, I'm having a lot of problem, give it like a 10-minute pause and make sure that it's hard, dry. Gotcha. Does that make sense? It does. All right. I often find that when I'm freehanding, I kind of organically tend to exaggerate things like gesture. Um, it's something that you sort of pick up uh, as you paint. Now, on this nice, lovely little flower here, where the stem is in perspective, right? We have a nice little perspective stem, and things are... I actually, when I'm just freehanding, I don't give myself a lot of details. Hmm. I give myself um, little directions, minor directions, minor little moments where I'm like, oh, hey, I think it's going to go like this. But I'm not really like, Ugh, with myself. The frog we have to paint first. And one of the reasons we know we have to paint the frog first is the flower is the closest object to us. And the frog is layered into it. So we're going to get the nicest layering of our petals when we paint him in first. So we actually get the privilege, the pleasure, the joy of painting in our frog first. For sure, let's put out some phthalo green. I think that's a, a green color is a pretty, pretty uh, predictable <laughs> frog event. I'm going to put out some burnt sienna. Can like I say something? About you can the say phthalo? anything. Well, I mean, I can't say trouble from sometimes person. during the show, but no. <laughs> he doesn't. What do you need to say, babe? <laughs> well, when it comes to the phthalo, Mm -hmm. It ain't easy being green. It isn't easy being green. It isn't easy mixing green. No. So no, you it, gotta... it actually can be okay mixing green, but sometimes when we're mixing green. Now, we're going to also put out a little bit of our quinacridone. This particular tube from the acrylic line calls it quinacridone fuchsia, but most companies will call it quinacridone magenta. That's Is... the color right there, and you can find it in several lines of paint. Now, I, I do have a question about that green. I'm going to just be a stinker and put out some Naples yellow light. Yes, about my green? Yeah. So is there a relationship between that green and yellow that are important? Uh, yes, actually, there really, really is. Um, this green is a blue bias green. So when I mix it into my cad yellow, even though my cad yellow is kind of a warmish yellow, it's still 
close enough to primary, a lot of times they'll use it in a set as a primary um, to make very bright greens. So it'll be important to know to use that green and not interchange it because it would look weird. Well, anytime you change the greens, I, don't, I, I would not go so far as to say weird. I would say different. You could have hypnotoed. If you, if, if you were to do like, a, don't laugh, a hooker's green, <laughs> it's a different green than, say, sap green, than a bamboo green, than a phthalo green. There's a lot of green paints out there. There's no right or wrong in them. And you can mix the color green. A little phthalo blue and a little cad yellow does make the color green. That looks- These have been known to happen in relationship to each other. I, that frog looks like put it's out a some total, cad red medium. I think that frog's a total knitter. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, making Afghans. I won't tell on you about that. I won't get you in trouble, but you know, it's possible. It's possible. So we see some things about our frog, and I'm going to get a nice little. This is a number four cat's tongue. Maybe I'll switch it up to an eight to just make it easy at first. Filling in big spaces fast. I will do my number eight cat's tongue. Okay. You could use a filbert or a bright. It's not important that you have this exact brush. It's more important that you have control over the edge of the brush so that you have clean areas and you feel like, oh, well, like, I've got a handle on that. All right, I'm going to take a little of my Naples Yellow Light and my quinacridone. If you don't have Naples Yellow Light mixed together, uh, two parts white to one part cad yellow where I'm using this. Does that make sense? So like two little parts of the white, one part cad yellow, just to make a very light yellow that you mix into your quinacridone. And then put it to the side so you're mixing with me and not being particularly worried. So see how we have this little underspace here, little underbelly? We definitely, definitely want to paint that in here, don't we? And I have it be very pink because he has a little pink value into that underbelly. And I don't want to lose it. If you find at this stage, right now, take a gut check. If you're finding that because you're painting student paints, you don't get good coverage, paint your frog white first, dry it, and then paint over it. Hmm. If that's your experience. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my bird sienna into my uh, nice little Thalo green, and I'll add some yellow to it, and it's going to give me kind of bright but still dark green. So we can see that it's bright, but it's yeah. still dark. I'm going to come along the front of this little space here. The nice thing about when you paint on a black canvas, if I have to change a line here in any place, it's so easy for me to do because I just come back with black, and it's like erasing. I'm going to bring that down a bit. Nice swoopy lines bringing my little frog body down. Just bringing their frog body down. So as you're painting, you feel like, man, I don't like that eye or I don't like where that is. You know, you can totally fix it. As you wish. Kind of like the Princess Bride. I love it. Yeah, it's just a fun little thing there. He's pretty happy. I come in, right, with a little bit of black paint, not too concerned, not too worried. And I can come around the outside of him and clean up anything that I want to that I think needs a little bit of a straightening out or speaking to. Hmm. Giving myself nice clean lines around my focal object. Not hard. Not upsetting and not a worry in any way. I really like the shape of this daisy, this Gerber daisy. Now, to keep things from getting messy on you, it could be a good idea right now to dry this. So, wow, that was a little shock. Just don't forget to dry it, little cutie froggy guy. And I will grab some of these questions so that, uh, yeah, what's going on? If, uh, Go through. I'll catch some of these questions and see what's going on here. The uh, I was over there working on a little technical challenge. So October retreat. Yep, we'll talk about that. Do do do. Uh, cool, John. It's gonna have a thinking. It's gonna have a think about. 
Is it having to think about? <laughs> it's going to have a little bit of a think about. While I'm here, I might as well take some of my green mixture that I have. And I'm going to come down to my stem and just start to think about my stem. I know I've got a lot of painting to do over it, but it's just I can put this here now. Sometimes it, there's a little bit of paint management planning when you're painting where you think, well, I'm going to be over here in a minute. So if I take care of this now, right, I can really get some work done and then change it later. Just put that there. So that's kind of nice, isn't it? A little bit of that green going up, thinking about its little space. It's also letting this little frog kind of cool and dry. Come back in. Now, now the petals will be all about how we layer these. I'm going to grab a number four round and I'm going to answer that question. I can hear John gearing up to while sipping my coffee. Yeah. So, okay. So a couple things. One, if y there was some folks who were saying they had some unusual smells from their paints. So if you have a strong chemical smell coming from your paint, should you check with your... Yes. Yeah. Because that's not usual. I mean, okay. So there, there is, this is, this is a polymer, right? Right. And it has sulfacants and surfacants and all kinds of things in it to help, like, the polymer and the pigment work together. So it's going to have a smell. It could have a smell. But it's going to be a relative... But it's mild. So if it's okay. really strong um, and there isn't a bunch of warning labels on your paint. If there's a bunch of warning labels on your paint, they're probably about that smell. Okay. But if there isn't a bunch of warning labels on your paint, you should go to the company and say, yo, this crazy stink. Am I worried about that <laughs> hmm. or am I not worried about that? Because it can be that paint goes off. People, paint can go off. It's super duper can for realsies. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a little bit of my, oh, uh, I think I'll do my cad yellow and my burnt sienna to start this. And I'm going to talk a bit about his little eye right here. Now I'm using a number four round. And I'm just going to paint that, like, as you do. We've got some some of our Sherpa soaps back up in the stores, isn't it? I don't know. So I, I believe we, so. I believe it's on the Amazon store. I believe we had some in our store and some on the Amazon, but it will be, check on, our, check on both places. We'll have it going up as we can. We have to stock those in two different locations. Yeah. And they sell out at different rates. So... You know, it's so this weird. far eye is a half circle. See that? It's not a mm -hmm. full circle. It's like a half circle. It's not completely full. And I got a little crazy with this. I may have to come back with my green. You know, that's the yellow and brown again. But I don't mind because I'm gonna come back with my green. And I'm gonna come up with my nose, and maybe kind of have that in perspective. Oh, look at easy to fix now if you came in a little late and you're a little behind yeah. don't don't worry we um oh yeah just go back start at the beginning watch and catch up it's or okay hang out and chat because it's fun it's true hang yeah. out and chat because it's fun because on the replay you can pause me you can rewind me you can put me on mute mm. a lot of people like to put me on mute i don't recommend it because i'm explaining stuff but hey <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it's your art studio I'm going to continue to add some yellow to the green. So you see how that primary green mixture, which was a little bit of my burnt sienna and a little bit of my cad yellow. I do. And I'm just adding more cad yellow into it. It's giving me a lighter value. Sometimes when we're trying to lighten a green, we uh, will try to lighten it with white, which gives us a mint color. It can make it hard to get some of those bright right colors that we're looking to get to bring this around here if you paint into your eye too far i really want you guys not to worry any way about it in any 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 way i'm going to come along here and just sort of try to make sure that shape is good you know because you've got a shape in this little nose that we've got to sort of talk about because if you think about it this is a sort of a round little shape right here 
When you're painting, you're really looking more at shapes and value. And I'm bringing a little highlight of that green through and across the nose. And definitely let's highlight the black, not the black, the green on the yellow. So a little more yellow into that green, as you can see, bringing it down here. You can make your frog lean. He can be more like a tree frog. You can make him uh, kind of pudgier and he'll be more like a toad. Where I have to come in here, you know, that's that weird space where his mouth and his body kind of work together. I'm going to come into this color and it makes a half toe. You know how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Bring it over to that so that I can come here with this kind of little half tone, this little transition, talking a bit about how that might do. What? I know. It's so cool. Coming along there. So it still has that pink in it. It is making a nice little movement from where it's going. And we have a little bit of the shadow. I can come get just a little bit of pink in here. I like doing this. See how it just transitions? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not worried. I just can go. Just fine. And it almost makes a bit of a sense of shadow, even though what I'm doing is that halftone value. I'm going to rinse out a bit. I'm going to get back into my quinacridone Naples yellow light, which is tight knit yellow. PY53 is the pigment code. It does not look like a Band-Aid. It looks like a, oh, a bit of a creamy green yellow. I'm going to come into my white. We're going to start to speak a bit about this. You know what we're doing? Mm hmm Blending these here. And that pink is nice because it's shining through. Dry brushing that back here, just doing these nice little brush strokes, letting these, where these two areas are wet, it blends together. So if this paint is wet and that paint is wet is when you get a better blend. You'll see if you look very close at the picture that there's a titch of kind of a purple value. Mm. And how you would get that is you would put out a smidge of blue. Smidge? Smidge. I don't need that much for this particular painting. It's not necessary. Smidge, smidge, smidge. I get, look, I just I'm barely on there and I get over into this color. And it'll give you that belly shadow. <laughs> Kind of color that you can start to talk about. You can be like, more of that, my friend. And you'll go, okay. If you insist. See how that's like a purple? Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to say, oh, this little belly here. Has a bit of a shadow cast on it. You would not want this to be a bright purple. And if it gets bright purple on you. You're going to want to definitely come back and knock it back into my yellow pink with white. Try not to drag my sleeve through all my paint. Outside lip here can be much brighter because it's in the light. And I can sit there and say, oh, well, there's, there's a little bit of that light right here. And coming down. And we're going to hide his little green leg. But it's there. Hmm. And we can start to say, oh, it's there. I'm going to make a nice darker green with just my pure phthalo green. Darker green with my pure phthalo green just kind of coming along there. He's looking pretty good. Yeah. Now, he's got a lot of interesting little shapes and shadows, and some of that's going to be about you finding value. So if I take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green, as you do, and I add a smidge of my cad yellow to sort of warm it, I can play with those values to exaggerate where those shapes are. Just a bit. As is needed. And then when I pop highlights... That can help me create the illusion of shape and realism. Let's add some bright green right here. And we know that we want this to be lighter green. And you can see how 
that shadow helps separate those two spaces. And that's what you want to do. I'm just on the tip of my brush. Bring that around here. It's nice. Line that down. I'm going to wipe off my brush. More yellow! Because he's a very bright little green frog. And he needs some more yellow on this part of the nose coming off. It's almost highlighted. And more yellow. Through here. Definitely up here. Around his little eye. And he's got that weird, uh, Little frog thing there. I'll have to paint that in. That weird little frog organ. It's a frog organ. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but I know it's a frog organ. Makes them fast in the water. You know what? I wasn't comfortable dissecting my frog. So I may not have you know, current good medical information. I'm going to go ahead and add a little green there. You know the, the mouth is going to come back that far. Brush that down. He's just getting brighter, greener, and greener. Anytime you want to soften a line, you can come back with your brush. I like clean it and we'll soften it and sort of help with the transition. See how I'm doing? It's not wet yet. My brush is slightly damp. I can continue to make these transitions a little softer. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this, my pink and my yellow, as you do. And go ahead and add that hint. It's the hint, it's the start, we're thinking about it. He's got a thing. You know he's got a thing. He's got a thing. Come get some of his, uh, come get some of the magenta. And you're going to come under the lip here with a fine line. If you can get a fine line with this, if you have another detail brush, if you're like number four round doesn't give you enough of a line, you can always switch to a smaller detail brush. Add a little bit of magenta right there. And he has some kind of pinking around where the nose is. There's two crazy nose holes. Did you guys notice those? Yep. They tripped me out. What's up with the nose holes? He's like, I am how I am. You accept me. I'm going to definitely try to say, hey, those are there. Softly. I don't want to detail them up too much. Pink is maybe too much, so I'll just tap that out with a brush. See how you can tap out with a brush and soften something? Mm -hmm. That tapping up and down motion. And you can go back and get some color. Little yellow, little white. He needs some more highlights. More? More. So my yellow is here, and I'm going to pull it out. I'm also, if you have it, treat yourself to the Naples yellow into this mix. And I'm going to get some white into it. What's funny? You're adding the Naples. I am. I like it because it's just so creamy. Yeah, I'm going to come here and add some of these. The colors. If you have trouble with the flow, add a little water. Coming along the top. Mm. Tapping up and down to maybe, you know, soften the line and blend it. You can do that. On here. You it's like can. soft green. What am I doing? You can do it. I hope so. I believe in your frog. 
Let's all believe in our frogs. Your frog believes in you. The world is uncertain, but let's believe in our frogs. <laughs> they haven't let us down yet. <laughs> do as the frog do and chill on a flower. I mean, right? Do as the frog do, man, and chill on a flower. If I could spend an hour on a flower. I'm going to take my ye cad yellow and my burnt sienna. You know, and just come here and just make sure that this eye is. If we all spent an hour on a flower, it would be a better world. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's I'm just, not saying I know what a better world needs, but. Let's all do that. We could just. Hour, an hour with the flower has to be better than what we're doing yeah. now. An hour with the flower. I like kind of tapping that down. It's super fun for me. And see, he's just starting to come to space, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's got his little thing, and you're like, oh, man, look at your little thing go. And you can even add a little of, look, you can add your quinacre down to that. And you can create all kinds of fun little lip half tones. You saying this frog is spaced out? He's something. You got to be real careful with this, guys, though. So don't overdo. See how I wiped out? Mm-hmm. I come here with my brush and just kind of edge it, blend in. You got to come back and get some yellow. No, come back and get some. Don't worry about it. These little wonderful values and hues really do make a difference to your overall final frog. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my blue and some white. I feel like I see a hint of this here, and I'm going to add some of that under his eye. A little blue under his eye. He's like, don't hassle me. I was sleeping in. He has some feelings about it. I'm going to take a little of my blue and some of my white, and I let it get into the dirty paint because I don't want it to be such a bright thalo blue. Yeah. I'm going to start somewhere. And it's okay if it like is kind of neutralized with a little bit of quinacridone so it kind of goes more into the purple. That's okay. I'm going to come here and across the top of the nose. Let me make sure I've got good flow. I'm improving the flow by dipping water. Oh, my goodness. We've just been teaching so long. How is everybody doing? Pretty good. I think we need to take like a, like a, oh, life is fun break. Sometimes we get so into teaching the class. Yes. We forget all the stuff. I'm going to add another one of these beginnings of a reflection here and here. Do we have any questions, silly or otherwise? Oh, let's uh, see here. I was, just, I was just answering someone. This one was like, what's the name of the website? Oh. Yardsherpa.com. Yardsherpa.com. Not really a silly question as much as a helpful one. Mm -hmm. And that's where we would have links to the reference photo, the traceable, all of the things that you would need for this project. Yes, very much. And what brush are you currently using? I'm using a number four round. You can find these like a lot of places. You really can. You really, really, really can. They're round. They're round. I'm going to get a little of my brown over into my black, like you do. Outer edge of this has got a bit of that coming up. Whole eye. Mm. All right. Take a little bit of that dark. I'm even going to come in here with this very, very dark color. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a dark shadow kind of tipping along on the mouth, if you know what I mean. And then even one up here. That's his Talk about the shadow of his little gill. That's his tympanium. Mm-hmm. Is it? It is. I, That's I said, mm-hmm, like I had any idea when I just earlier said, I've got no idea. Well, Sapphire Eyes came in and told me. Thank you. She was like, those two organs on each side of the head are eardrums. They, they're called tympanium. They transfer sound for vibrations into the inner ear so that he, he or she can maintain their watertight skin. Must watertight skin it. Well, you know. I'm going to take, I added a little, <laughs> you know, I like it, watertight skin. You know, when you're a frog, you do want a watertight bum bum, don't you? 
you don't want to like, you've never seen a frog getting out of the water, jumping on one leg, trying to get water out of his ear. You really have it. And honestly, wouldn't it be disturbing if we did? That's because they got that tympanium thing. They got tympanium. So, I have no tympanium. No, we don't. I do splutter. <laughs> Which... Spluttering is happening. <laughs> That's a guaranteed thing. I'm trying to make a very modeled sort of eye space. Mm. And I may put out a little more black. I don't know why I'm being so miserly with my black, as if I don't have tubes and tubes and tubes and tubes of it. And they make, and there's more at the store. And there's more at the store. More at the store than you think right now. All right. So we're going to come around his little eye, like eyes. Make this sort of extreme little black line. This certainly has it. It may even kind of disappear into the black background. Then we're going to bring a little bit of this up here, the first of this, because he's got this weird sort of little frog pupil. And we all know it from Hypnotoad, don't we? We, we do. Those who have bore witness to Hypnotoad know that that little piece moves. We'll let that be there for a minute because we're going to adjust it, but he's starting to come into focus. Now I'm going to go in, rinse my brush out quite well. Get some clean water if you don't have it. Do you think they have clean water? Mm, I think it's out there. I mean, we all think it exists, but did you go get some? I'm going to add some pure white. You asking me to get you? I'll give you some. No, I'm good. No, if you need some, I don't mind. I planned before I came out. I was just saying that they got clean water. Oh, yeah. I thought so. I just want to make sure you weren't, that wasn't a, like, husband, a plea for help. I need water. Uh, I didn't plead for help, but you know, I know what you mean. So is I'm this like add a, like a little bit of a reflection here in the center of that blue. It's just a little bit hotter. And of course, we need some right here under the skin. Because it's the white reflections that make him seem wet. Can you guys see that? Mm. That's what's going to give him that wet effect. Is that range. And you do want that range. One right there at that lip. And a little bit coming down. Just so tempted to put it there because I, f I know it's not there, but I feel like it needs to be there. Now I'm going to step back and look at that and see if I was crazy. Step back. Look no, at the frog. I wasn't crazy. <laughs> frog from afar. He just needs to be a little lighter yellow up top. <laughs> see, so sometimes you got to step back. And add a little bit of highlight there. We like that. Well, even more here. Some shapes. Let's get a little bit of our white into that yellow mixture. I like that uh, question. Yeah. I'm going to add a little highlight to that nostril. Maybe a bit of that tonality. With some of the highlights that I'm having here. Just so that they look kind of integrated into Mr. Froggy Pants. But when you look, get away from him, he's gorgeous, right? See, you don't know if he has pants on. We don't know if he has pants on, but we're not going to sit there and ask him because we respect his frog privacy. The pupil itself, guys, should be quite dark. So you may need to dry him and then paint it and then dry him and paint it. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is up here because I've got to bring a reflection to show that other eye. I'm going to go ahead and get some just yellow kind of going on my brush here. And then come underneath. Just to make sure that that's got kind of some highlight to it. I think it just needs to be drier. Do you see how it picked up all that black? Yeah. This needs to be drier. So I'm going to work this back. Watch. Pretty hot mess, right? Total boo-boo. That's how you fix it. Hair dryer. So, in this overrated land of pants, this frog may have gone without. So, thank you guys for joining us. It's a nice day to see you guys. It's a pretty good crowd of folks here. And it's been a while since we've had a nice 
the live session. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We were just, we were, there was some. I'm going to get a smaller brush. I'm going to get into my monogram liner because this, I want to, I want control, man. And the Janet Jackson is frog. Now there, when are you guys going to reschedule? What are you guys? When are you and I going to reschedule the Neverland? Uh, I will find an open moment. It, you know, at the very least next Saturday, it'll get back on there if I don't record it ahead of time. Mm. Because we just had no internet. Internets were no. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes the internets just go out on these live shows. And then you've got to figure out, like, how am I going to reschedule? They do things like updating wires and poles and stuff like that. So we can't control that. Clearly they went back to work because my internet's all went out. So like, they're like, called and we're like, hey, our internet doesn't work. Like, yeah, sorry, we're doing work in the neighborhood. When will it be back? I don't know. 24 hours, we'll let you know. That's not good. So. Meh. Meh. There we go. I want a white outer line around that pupil. I think I'm making him kind of squint at everybody. Is you were very far away. He has those eyes like you're very far away or it's very early in the morning. Yeah, he's getting those going, doesn't he? The exaggeration of value is going to be everything in these eyes. So I'm going to bring this little black line around just to make sure I have that nice exaggeration of value. That you would have. That you would want. You want it. You don't know you want it, but you want it. The frog does. He does. He wants it for sure. Take a little time? bit of green right here to the front of his eyes. See that? All goes in there. Just green sh circles. So what time tomorrow are you doing your watercolor thingy? Uh, I'm going to say that it's 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Sometime tomorrow afternoon. So if you go to the Art Sherpa Facebook page, not the group, not my page, but the Facebook <laughs> fan page, I know. I know. There's some out there. I know. <laughs> I just hear it from the internet. I'm like, I know too many. Um, <laughs> if you go there and you check events, you can follow it. And here's the reason I say follow it is because you don't have to go. If you say you're going and you don't go, I'm not going to come to your house and knock on the door. I swear. Where are you? I'm not going to be like, did you come to watercolor class? I didn't see you. <laughs> but if you say you're going, it'll notify you uh, every time I plan an event because it's scheduled out six months in advance. So that way you don't miss one. It's about the only way to circumvent Facebook's not notification system at all. So that's how you do that is you go in there and say going. And then you watch it from the page. I do drop those links in there. It's the Art Sherpa, like the Art Sherpa, Facebook, the Art Sherpa forward slash live or something. Mm. You can see it. It's in there. And then that's where you would watch it from on Facebook. But the event just lets you know traceables, what we're doing. You get sneak peeks. It's like free to be in the event. It doesn't cost anything. There was somebody pretending to, who took the event and tried to charge a bunch of people. If somebody tries to charge you, that wasn't me. Don't give them any money. Don't do it. It's a free class. Come enjoy. <laughs> All right. I've talked enough where maybe it's dry. I was going to go dry it, but now I've been so chatty, John. You, you it's probably dried on its own. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some yellow. Actually, I'm going to get my cad yellow red over here and into my yellow. Wasn't that cheeky? Did you see me do that with my nice small detail brush? I did not. Mm. I was reading chat. And I'm going to tap in a little kind of model pattern here to his eye. What does Chad have to say? Hello, everyone. Did no. they bring donuts? They, there wasn't. There was lots of people saying, you can knock on my door. I would, just, wouldn't that be just crazy? You watch some YouTuber and they show up and you're, you didn't come to my live. But see, it would be me there with the roll call saying, Bueller. 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 And like, of course, he's not going to show up because he's in the Ferrari. But is he really? <laughs> I would be in the Ferrari. <laughs> so I'm going to add some of these little spots down here and some of these little spots up here. Aren't those lovely? Very much. Little spots. I'm going to get some purple going. Purple sometimes is a nice color when you don't want to use black, but you need something deep.
just getting some getting some of that highlights letting this dry grab some just white and now you're going to also hit kind of in here too just make sure that those white highlights are super highlighty but you have little spots that are really really popped if you want it to feel wet if you'd like your frog to feel like it's a little bit wet you're going to want to do that A little bit now on the eye I like to kind of come in I'm gonna grab a little bit of this kind of purple blue color from the quinacridone and the phthalo blue and I'm gonna add a bit of a the beginnings of what I will make a reflection here tapping into the black and then here and then here and it will come over into that white reflection. Startings. Wipe off, not rinse. Because I want a little pigment. And I could go mix it again, but why not just leave it on the brush? It's already there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of a hot highlight. A little bit of tapping on that eye here. Look at that. Yeah. Mr. Frog has eyes. Let's back up from him and look at how shiny Mr. Froggy is. All eyes on him. He's so shiny, right? He's very shiny. He's very nice. He's a very shiny, happy little frog. He's looking very froggy. Now, again, we did a loose sketch, and I'll show you something right now. See how beautifully it wouldn't sketch earlier? See how beautifully it sketches now? Yeah. It's because this paint is set. Ah. If you're having trouble, if you're getting kind of annoyed by all of it, that's what it is, is that paint is set. And so once it's set, you can dry over it. When it won't do it, it's because this hasn't set yet. It's still warm. It's still something. I'm going to do the petals with my cat's tongue. You could use a filbert or a round, right? I want a nice sized one. Like there's, this is a nice sized round. Right, or a nice sized filbert, just something to give you some size. So you're not like having to paint, paint, paint the petals forever. If you think of these as like scales and things, right? Yeah. Um, it's really about capturing these upper ones and then coming in and layering the next ones and layering the next ones and catching the shape of the stroke and then creating the highlight. Gotcha. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start with a little cat red and a little of my... You know what? I may need some water. I may be down to that that zone. One cup. Yeah, I'll help you get some. I need a, a, a heat. Can I blow bubbles and get a heat on my coffee and some new water? Yeah, I can do that. All right. I'm going to blow bubbles. I'm going to come forward. You can leave me with any questions or I can go find them. It's cool. Oh, so what I would say is, let's see here. There's Look, he's a frog in the black. Lots of people who uh, love the frog, they... Having lots of birthdays out there today. Happy birthday. And for the birthdays I missed from the last one, I'm so sorry because I know that was some birthday Sunday. So happy belated birthday and happy birthdays today. These bubbles are for you. So you can talk about the event and upcoming uh, projects you have. Okay. Events and upcoming projects that I have. So things that you should know about that go on. I do uh, group lives. So if you're in the Art Trip official group, there's a couple lives a month where I catch you up on stuff that's happening, what's going on. The one that we just did from last Tuesday, I just showed you some weird stuff from my studio and, and things I was into right now. But usually we do a technique and I give you uh, some ideas of what's coming up. Um, you can check out if you want a kit of paint. We have like all the colors that I'm using on the Acrylic April store. The moderators can share that link. Um, but you can, you can anywhere you want to get your paint and stuff. Watercolor classes is on Wednesdays on Facebook. We meet up. We do some really fun projects. Um, I explain it step by step. So if you haven't watercolored before, it's pretty much exactly what you went through with acrylic, but with watercolor, and I'm there to help, and it's live, and you can chat and all the things that you like, but now you can add watercolor to it. Um, we are back on for the retreat. We finally, you know, have our dates, and here, I'll make sure you have this so you can heat it. So we have our dates um, at the end of October. We will be updating 
uh, our event tab on our website, which is www.theartsherpa.com. Basically what it is, it's an art retreat. And um, we had, uh, we're going to be back in October with any luck. And this time we have some backup plans. So watch that page, check over the next week to see updates about that. Cause we have some more ways that you can check into that. If you're doing uh, the patronage, you guys have a lot more going on. We had our first Zoom class together, which I was so surprised how well that went. So we're going to try our first test Zoom class. Uh, Zoom is a little different than a regular live because it's interactive and you're on camera. But we don't require anyone to be on camera. That's super optional. You can, you can totally opt out. It's fine. Um, and it's a family-friendly kind of group. So we tend kids come and we don't record it except my hand part, but we don't like record the part where we're on video. Um, and that's going to be a uh, super fun. We're f working on the Fox girl, finishing her up. Um, there's going to be uh, some video of me embellishing Jacques and getting that last group out. Um, so it's just kind of some cool stuff. Uh, if you hadn't heard, we moved. <laughs> so right. We were supposed to have our art retreat right before april was like the end there and we we're gonna have this really cool retreat and 35 of us were gonna get together and paint like all day every day for like five days four nights non-stop art art inside art outside everything all inclusive crazy meals crazy fun in hot springs arkansas um but then this weird flu came and just destroyed everybody's life literally um and hopefully you know, uh, didn't impact, you know, I, I don't even know what to say about that because it killed people. It's a very serious thing that happened and the country shut down. So in the middle of that, right after, uh, we were supposed to move and we moved right before the whole thing shut down mm. before acrylic April unpacking. So that's why our internet's sketchy because <laughs> we're not used to it now. There's some stuff. We gotta get used. To, it's a new, new company, new set of challenges, new everything. And, and that's what's going on. I'm blabbering, Don. You did. I blabbered let's call it official let's put up an emoji let's put up a mouth emoji because the girl just blabbered mm. blah, 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 blah. i did you ever so, just blabber we do sometimes i do i like i just start to blah, and it just all comes out i had a chocolate we were having a celebration dinner with my mother-in-law and she got chocolate wine and i Two glasses of chocolate wine and two things fail on me. My filter and my ability to recognize facial expressions. Very dangerous combo. Mm. I didn't know that. Those of you who have that, we're like, well, my, my own internal dialogue just all comes out. And it needs a filter. It needs it. Does Not it? every idea I have is a good one. Not every thought I have needs well, to be shared. So I'm going to have to remember, what, what, someone did that timestamp for me. Did you just do that? <laughs> For real, see? Mm. Mm. Like, I don't know where you sleep. Shall we bubble that? Shall we bubble John? Who's just decided to like be in trouble. I don't know why. Let's bubble him. <laughs> you guys weren't in a rush, were you? <laughs> ah, today is the day where I like do things people have been asking me to do, like free handed in. Be a little chiller on the way through the painting. Mm -hmm. That way you guys can paint along. So how do we feel on the frog? I think it really came good. out pretty lovely. I'm yeah. real happy. We didn't grid. So see, you can you don't have to grid. You just, we, you know, could grid. You could grid. We could grid. We don't grid. have to grid. You're not grid obligated. So this is one of my favorite colors. It's Cad Red Medium and Quinacridone Magenta. And a little Naples Yellow. <laughs> Those of you that know me are like, oh, that <laughs> color combo. Ugh. Why do you have to pick Naples Gate, Naples Yellow? It's so annoying because it's pretty. Sometimes artists do things because it's pretty. So when I'm going to do a petal, wish me luck because this is the first one. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to just press in on the corner of the brush and kind of pull down because I'm not trying to capture all the shape i'm just trying to capture some some of the shape i think i might want a little white into this so it has better coverage okay so not ironically not I ironically like, it yeah, feels I, ironic i like the way that you have to paint these petals in yeah because it, just as a beginner the the first petals you're putting in are intrinsically background petals right so that if they're not as good as later petals which look better that's okay because the later petals are supposed to look better because they're closer to you and sharper and, you know, 
Yeah, so, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> you know, but theoretically speaking. <laughs> how it goes. You, I'm gonna add, I added some weight to this to sort of lighten these pedals a bit but from I the other pedals because they are just a little bit lighter. And I might lighten some of that pedal, but not all that pedal. So we're starting to get that. And then this one's a weird one because it's a forward facing pedal. So I'm going to do the part where it comes down and then I'll come here and paint its forward face. See, I'm doing that. Mm. Doing stroke, stroke, stroke. Because I got to, I think it should actually be even a darker color. I could get right into the magenta here. And be like, look, you're a forward folded over pedal. So you've got to behave. These pedals, big. As a pedal. I think that one can kind of go over that one a bit. So we're just trying to pay attention to the layers that's that's there. And we'll create the shape with value. Mm. In theory, let's see how it works out. <laughs> A little more white into it. And it's okay to get a little more blue to kind of imply that this one is sh shaded. What you want to do is just make sure that you've got basic shape. All right. A little more into the blue, as you know, in shadow. Let's come down here and capture these weird winky dinky ones. So it goes winky dinky ding dink because they're going to be behind these here. So let's say, oh my goodness, there's one here. And then there's these two right here. Whoa, I got a drip. So if you yeah. get a drip. Oh, hold on. Where'd you go? Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's a runaway. Come here. I'm going to rinse out my brush really well. And then oh. I'm going to just pick it up. All that happened is I had too much water on my brush and, and gravity. Pretty fixable. Okay. Not a big deal. If this paint is dry, that's not a big deal. This paint is not dry. It's a bigger deal. <laughs> Now I can try to like kind of, even though I know it's like in the background, kind of capture the gesture of that stroke, it can help if you're having trouble capturing that. And then there's a couple that are super tucked back over here. I'll be a little more careful with my water load this time. These will be a little more pink purple. So those will be the two that I try to tuck out from behind the main petals. Looking good? Very. So there we are. Now I can come get a little more of my magenta. And if you need to, a little more purple with the blue. And you'll treat this as trying to create a sense of shadow. So if this has a little bit of shadow to it, you're going to want to add that. I'm coming through nanning. This for sure is going to be a lot darker even before I pop a folded petal over it. Add a little purple to that. A little deep purple there. I mean, I'm going to come back with lighter colors, but there doesn't hurt. Now these here, believe it or not, even though they're kind of white at the tips, have a much deeper kind of color to them. So it's all right to add that. How we are. A lot of you guys feel frustrated with flowers. I know. Not always your favorite. They're always fun. They're good to do. Rinse out. And I'm going to dry this. All right. So again, when you're driving that, just make sure you use those heat settings. As you said earlier, um, I was over here reading chat, so I wasn't quite prepared for her just to go, ah, we're doing this. So, or switch to heat to drying but uh yeah so i'm gonna say thank you guys for joining us again because i love coming out of here and chatting with you guys which is why i was distracted i was reading your chat and i love the i love the bubbles 
So I hope I think that's what everyone was saying in here. So thank you guys. Don't forget to check out the website, theartsherpa.com. That's where we do hide a lot of our valuable free resources. So you can find them all out there, easily to locate in the little search button on our website, theartsherpa.com. And um, hmm, what else? The uh, frog is looking pretty cool. So I don't know. How's everybody doing? Pretty good. Are they having fun? How are your how are their paintings coming out? I'm always interested how their fellow paintings are going. I can't. I just, this is definitely a one way kind of view. A one way conversation. Well, it's I can see what the they can see me or you. But you can't see this, them. I can't see them. Ah, such a shame. Cameras. I'm adding a little navel teal to my background. <laughs> it, this would be that episode of the you know, the Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where the TVs can see back at you. Add some highlights. Just some edge. You're saying this is an edgy flower? Could be edgy. Must be a teenager. That would be funny if we didn't have one. (laughs) A little bit to the tip of the petals. can even come into my tad yellow if I ever need to brighten anything up. Ooh, Melissa said that uh, if you want more butterfly and clover action, check out the acrylic April tutorial with petals in it. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah, that was so much fun. That was a really fun, fun. Well, the whole month was fun, wasn't it? It was. So this petal is bent over. See how we do it? You're just going to make this highlighted. Versus, you know, in shadow. Just little highlights as you can. Everyone thinks this turned out really nice. Lots I of compliments. I'm so on glad. How wow, this is. Now, I'm going to add a little white highlight to the top of that. I'm going to, I'm going to. And we're going to stand back for a second and make sure that our petals look like, oh, like we've got some shadow, like stuff is happening, right? Okay. So I have questions question. while I'm looking. Yeah, while you're doing this, what is the threshold to like saying it's okay just to pick up a paint and paintbrush and start that process? Because I think there's a lot of trepidation on when is it okay to sort of declare yourself as an artist and so, so to speak, begin the process of painting. Well, but a lot of people really won't call themselves an artist. They will, they, okay, so what happens to you guys is, you guys hold art in such a high level of esteem in your hearts, right? And so you hold it up here in this high, high pedestal. But chances are, you are not doing good self-management of holding yourself up on a high pedestal to do. You might be holding yourself on a lower pedestal, especially where it comes to your perceived skills as an artist. And mm. it, you'll really resist calling yourself an artist because you're like, I'm not one of those people. I'm one of these people. I'm just kind of dabbling. I'm just kind of painting. I'm just kind of maybe something. But here's the thing. That's not the definition of art. The definition of art is somebody who expresses themselves visually through uh, art medium. Mm. That's all it is. You just have to paint. As soon as you paint, you're an artist. If you paint, you're an artist, right? Now, you may have in your mind something that is an artiste, somebody who's hanging in galleries or museums, somebody who sells at craft fairs, somebody who paints in your family at a particular level you're personally aspiring to. Whatever your internal metric is, it's kind of an illusion, but I understand why it's there. 
But the truth is, just paint. Because art just takes time, skill, and you just perseverance, time, and skills. You got to learn the skills. You got used to the medium. Right now, I'm teaching a bunch of my students that I've had for a long time in acrylic watercolor. And it's the same thing again. It's getting used to the medium, understanding what it will do, developing the skills, and following the steps. And boom, it's a painting. But if you don't know what those steps are and you don't know what those skills are, it can be really hard to get the painting out. Can, and, and you might get stuck in the gulf of despair. In the gulf of despair. You want to explain the gulf of despair, John, while I sip my coffee? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty simple. It's sort of the, it's the, it's the area between knowledge and ability. So you know you want to paint something. You know you want to paint something like this, but you don't yet know how to do that. So there's this gulf of despair where you know you can do it or you want to do it, but you can't yet do it. And it takes practice and time and effort and repetition to get through that gulf of despair. It truly does. Like, no joke. Yeah. It's, it's a tough thing. But people get through it. Yeah. You'll get through it. You're not missing some necessary ingredient to be an artist. You have yep. everything you need. And, you know, this is, a, this is a much more straightforward process than many engineering the places where you don't know where you don't know. Here, yeah. it's, it's much more practice-oriented. It really is. So don't be hard on yourself. Don't criticize yourself for the results. Mm. Really pay be present, not to like how the painting comes out, but how painting makes you feel. Keep practicing. Embrace the things that are hard because those are the ones you grow from most. Show up every week. Hang out with your friends who are going to share the same experience that you do, which is like, oh, that was crazy. Or did you see her painting where she was like, that was super easy, but it looked like a fire chicken? I don't know. You know, I thought Arabesque strokes were going to be super chicken. chill. They were not. I like fire chicken. We all like fire chicken. I mean, everybody likes their fire chicken. But it's like sometimes even in our process, our conversation back and forth between teacher and student, I'll be like, Arabesque stroke, no problem. And you guys are like, Arabesque stroke, all the problems. <laughs> all of them. You hear me? All of them. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I got to come out with some more like break it down, Arabesque strokes. But here's what I know. I know you can do it. I know if I can figure out how to explain to you the steps, you can do it if you practice. You are capable. That's what I know. So, wow, I'm up on my little. So there's. I'm going to get some white paint into my pink. <laughs> Make a lighter value. But I do know that everybody can do it. I do. Everybody can do it. Oh, there it is. That's the button. Oh, they, you're just trimming those I'm just little kind of adding these little highlights to the petals that give them their uh, shape and definition. And if they've got these weird little minor curls, it's hard to explain, but they do. I'm just trying to make sure that those are there, stroked yeah. out and represented in some kind of little way. There's a lot of folks here who have, who have done some level of fire chicken that they are either love hate or have fallen in love with over time yeah i think the fire chicken is one that you look back later and go man you know i hated that painting but now i love that painting yeah because it's like okay well that you know i was too close to it and then once you get a little more it was too fiery or or you get <laughs> you get like some time between it and you don't have the pre like we all have this idea of the fire chicken we wanted to make instead yeah. of being accepting of the fire chicken that we got Shoot. Is that not a metaphor for all our things in life? So, you know. We did not accept <laughs> our own selves the fire chicken we made versus the fire chicken we imagined we should make. Wow, those conditions. So, you know, I think that if, if we give time and some acceptance to our fire chicken, it, you know, it, we're, we're less uh, demanding that the fire chicken look away and, and now you're just like, oh, I'm just cool. It looks like a cool fire chicken. And sometimes it takes a couple people to come over and go, hey, you know, that's a cool looking fire chicken. And then you're like, really? It was Before anyone gets confused, we are actually talking about a phoenix, but it everybody's partner, spouse, kid <laughs> called it a fire chicken. So it became the fire chicken. Burt Reynolds must be just crying somewhere. 
Why would Burt Reynolds be concerned? Because he drove a Firebird. Oh, it, it has are a those related thoughts? It has a phoenix on the hood. Does it? The fire chicken. Wow, that was a journey. <laughs> that was a weird way around to that thought. I, and I think it's Lonnie. It's like, oh, no. All right, so those look pretty good. You know, little highlights, little thoughts, little bits. If you get any boo-boos, you just come back and you go, no boo-boo, yo. You can remove any of your chalk that you don't like. And now, guys, we've got to do the next layer of petals, which is kind of more of the challenging part. Is it? Yeah, but we're going to be okay. Because these are more in the purple, so it's kind of like more of the color that we had going. You know, the little cad red, the little magenta, the little Naples yellow. But now we're going to get more into the purple version of it for just a second. Just a minute, you know, not forever. But we've got to... Um, kind of start to paint some interior petals that are maybe in shadow. Hmm. I'm going to come over here because I think some of these are actually highlighted. So I'm going to get this one here. This one's a big one. Sometimes between. I know I've got a. I'll have to do the, its top in a second, but I want to get its dark shadow right now. And then there's a big one happening here. That I'm going to have to bend over. And some more big ones happening here, but I will have to get some of my highlighted ones in. So I do want to get these shadow. I'm going to just pull in the shadows for right now. Let's pull in some of this shadow color of the flower. We know we need to. We know that's where we're at. Shadow color of the flower. We're good on our shadows. Mm -hmm. We're just going to pull that in. I'm leaving a lot of room for these to turn into petals that I can shape out. Now, up here. Up where? Up in this region. Uh huh. We're going to make a very, very light pink. So light. And we're going to come kind of in a, in a, in a cross across. This one kind of comes across. Need it to be even lighter. Just these groups here. Not too much more than this. You could bring one down like that. And then over here, we know we've got this nice big grouping of petals. These all sort of turn over and have a very different shape. You know, but you know that you've got to have a nice little topped one here. Right? It's petals coming over. Folded overs. And then this one... Even be much more of a sweep, and we're going to bring this down, kind of centering in towards each other. And we'll have to like detail that out once these are blocked in. Right here. When it's folded over and going to be more in highlight for certain than the rest. Just make sure I, I remember, Fire Chicken was day three of Acrylic April. Yeah, it was first week. First week of Acrylic April is always like a panic fest. All right, I'm going to drop that link here for these guys. Yeah. So Acrylic April is the 30-day painting program, so you can paint better in 30 days. Right? And it's an everyday paint. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. A little bit every day. Every day. Every day. And you do. You paint a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. Get a dark value. I'm going to brush that back here. It's not dark enough. But it's okay. Because we're just trying to paint that next layer that's coming in. This is like bricks. Now 
I need to come back in with some purple, I can easily do that to create some definition. space for these petals and then I'm gonna dry it yeah it's 30 days and in the beginning and the first week everybody like freaks out every year mm -hmm. not not their second year just their first year of doing it <laughs> their second year generally they come in and tell everybody you're okay you're okay I know it looks bad I know it feels bad but you're okay it's 30 days away you'll be fine just get through the first week yeah I know it's a fire chicken I know I know Chicken. First one seems so easy. Now you're a fire chicken. You're like, what? <laughs> Just paint through them. Don't worry about it. It's a big fun program. It's free. It is. I'm going to dry this so that I can have nice adhesion. Everything is bound so I can start to create definition here. So you'll find information about uh, Acrylic April on AcrylicApril.com. I'll make sure I drop a link here for you while we're uh, doing this. But uh, Acrylic April... Uh, was a program that Cinema put together to help people uh, learn to do daily painting. And uh, it uh, it was, I'm finding the link to it, do, 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 there it is. It, uh, it turned out to be a really cool program where we pre-recorded uh, 30 days worth of paintings and dropped them on a, uh, uh, every day, one a day. Uh, over April, and each one was sort of built on some skills that led to the last one to help you learn some daily painting skills. So, well, and fun. and it just real fast teaches you how to paint because you don't have any time to think about like you're like moving on, you're moving on, you're moving on, you're getting the skills. In 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 each painting, like it, I Mr. Miyagi the whole the whole month, I like mm -hmm. wax on, wax off, and at the end you're like gonna be able to take out Cobra Kai. So, but you gotta, you know, you're gonna have a bit it like where you're like, am I just cleaning your yard or am I learning martial arts? You're learning martial arts. This is not a good analogy. <laughs> but it's the one I have today. So it's the one you get. It is also true. I'm gonna add a little more of my pink because I'm running low. And I wanna have some nice clear pink where I need it. And where this kind of white is with a little bit of pink in it, I'm gonna load up my brush. I'm going to make sure I have enough water to get this. And I'm going to add some of the highlights that we were doing earlier, right? Nice. Because that's how we get the, the separation of these little petals from each other. To imply that maybe... They've got a little bit of that depth and shape. If you've got to come back with your pink, you can. There we I'm going to bring that down. So I just want the tip of that folded petal to be light. Some of it coming back should be light. But not too much. <laughs> I can relate there. Penny if you've said got to get some purple in there for the shadow, you just come in and go, no, 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 that's got to be a shadow. Shadow. Penny says that... Uh... Fire Chicken was one of my favorites uh, from Acrylic April, and my grandson loved it and took it home. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <sighs> I like the meaning of that particular one the most. Yeah. And it just was just, it was meaningful for me. You know, I think uh, it's easy to get lost in the world, isn't it? And we all need a fire chicken to light our way. I think we all need to remember that we're all a little bit of a phoenix. And that we have light that continues on. I'm going to bring that petal kind of through here so that I can pull it up into the green. And I'm bringing these brush strokes down long and strong. And you can kind of see the shape. This one is folded over into a little triangle and it brings it down. This one is a mished, mashed triangle, right? And these have that basic petal shape. Now, while I'm here, I can do an interesting thing, which is to take my yellow and my green. Very bright yellow, very bright green. And I'll always come into that. So it's sort of pink and green. And while everything is here, go ahead and pull some of that pink and green. That can be kind of a hard color to get, but it's really nice. I'm going to brush that in. This will be different than the green stamen. This is me trying to show that, that sort of pink green event that does happen in flowers because they do they get a little pink green don't they 
brush out that petal. And at this stage, you can kind of even start to shape particular petals. You can be like, hey, you, get in shape. Play ball. Do what you're supposed to do. And pull in that low part of the flower that'll have that sort of crazy green. If it gives you frustration, don't worry about doing it. But it can be nice when you do it right. Trying to capture the depth of color so I get the value so I can get the fold. And sometimes you need to exaggerate it. Don't be worried if you do. Don't be worried if you need to exaggerate. You just get that blue on there and be like, no, no, you've got to be a deep shadow. But you can see already, if we take a look at that, those petals are starting to exist, right? Mm -hmm. You're not hallucinating them. They're not a fic fictitious moment in your mind. <laughs> We're like, I swear there were petals here a minute ago. Now you can come up here. I might switch to a round to have more control around the turns, if that makes sense. Sometimes a round brush gives me a little more control around the turns. I think I'm going to actually fold it over a little bit facing. Maybe that way, I like that. We're nearly done. Mm. Nearly done, sir. Notice that I am highlighting where I want the petals to feel like they're facing me in light. I highlight them. You can always do that. You can sit there and say, hey, you're in light. And the leaf can be like, I know you think I am. And you're like, no, no, you are. I'll be like, okay. If you say so. And sometimes that little bit of light can do more to shape your flower than anything else. Shape your flowers. Super fun. Lots of light. Now, while this is having a dry for like some fine little highlights, right? Mm -hmm. You can take a little bit of your green. And what's wonderful at this point, you can you can go ahead and put a little brown into your green. But now you get to play with what happens when you add a little white to green. So we're going to come here, number four round. Bring that down. Bring it down. Right. So some of what you painted earlier will be showing kind of like of the petals in between, right? You can see it peeking out. Mm -hmm. and these are a bit like petal shapes. These are just the leaves that haven't yet modified into petals. Bringing that in. You can always add a little of your cad yellow. Highlighting some of those ridges. Oh my gosh, I missed a couple things over here. Oh, what'd you miss? I missed some bubble party. Oh, let's bubble because everything's got to dry for a second. So I say okay. we bubble party for a minute before we just finish the whole thing up. Yeah. How's it looking from far away? Looking pretty good there. All, All right. right I'm going to scroll down party. here because I saw. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
Uh, where'd it go? It said from Gracie, uh, who sent some patron support over here and said, you're amazing artist, Cinnamon. Thank and you. Then, yes, yeah, she, she did that twice. So thank you, thank Gracie. Thank you, Gracie. And there's lots of emojis, lots of people sending comments where they love your painting. They think this is beautiful. They really love it. Lots and lots of pretty emojis. So thank you for all those guys. And we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us for this. This is, like, as I said, one of my favorite things to do. So thank you. I'm glad I kind of freehanded this in because sometimes I think it feels like we've got to really detail that sketch out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got to be the most detailed sketch ever in the world to give you the result that you want. And really, honestly, when you're sketching and painting, it's often like tree, tree, I don't know, hill, 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 river. (laughs) You know, it's very loose and then you kind of work it out with the painting. But, you know, when you're learning how and you're using traceables, you're using the gridding method, it can feel very regimented. And just know that isn't your forever space. You can always grid if you want to grid, but you don't have to grid, right? Ah. You can go beyond that space. I don't want to say beyond because that implies like gridding is somehow like not as awesome as it is. And and seriously, I mean, unless you're Flynn, there's no going beyond the grid. <laughs> right? Lessons we learned. I took a little white into my mixture. And I'm going to come along my little stem here. I'm going to just go there and let's highlight a bit here. And now you can kind of see how that shapes out that little event. And you can continue with your white to sort of capture that comparatively. You definitely, definitely want to capture some of these highlights. If you get too many, What can you do? You just come back with your green. And fix it. Just painting that nice yellow green mix and just brushing that down. Catch a couple highlights. Rinse mm-hmm. out very well. This all should be dry enough to take the last bit. So I'm going to go ahead and, and it's not going to be pure white, but it's going to be my lightest color, almost a pure white. And I'm going to come to some places and add some of these highlights. Maybe there and definitely here. Step back. Lovely. Hmm. When you're happy with everything, you're going to take your signing brush. Oh, it, if you want to know, like the reason I use chalk is because I can do this with clean water. Oh. When the painting is dry, so I can clean up any lines. So you can paint around it with black if it's not coming up, but that's what I would do to like. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Just a nice, happy little frog on a happy little flower. If you're wondering what the grid thing is that we just kept mentioning, it's this reference. So you just draw what's in the square. You just go, I only draw this square, and I only draw this square. Only draw this square. Helps you. Or traceable. Oh, it's fine. Any of it's good. What color? I'm going to sign it in green. I 
I will get the painting that got pulled for oh, internet issues go. up on the schedule soon, guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe give it a same bat time, same bat channel. Try next Saturday. Mm-hmm. I hope you guys will come see me tomorrow on Facebook for the watercolor class for the octopus. I think it's going to be really fun. I'm going to put this here and turn around. What do you guys oh, think? Oh, that turned mm, out so mm, nice. Mm, yeah, I like it. Mm. I like it. You wow. know. You're my favorite vote. That turns out good. I like the frog. And everybody else here did too. Everyone has been, has been really enjoying it. This has been a really great. We've had a really nice group of people here. It's been really wonderful hanging out with everyone. Thanks everyone who supported us in the patronage and shared the links and copied and pasted the the whatever the things and do the I don't know how to social media. I want to thank, thank my community. I want to thank my moderators and I want to thank my husband for helping me have this live show and sharing this art class with you today. I hope you're enjoying your painting journey. Mm-hmm. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And we want to see you at Anisa really soon. Bye-bye.